Today, I am so lucky to welcome Christina Sundrenbat. She is the author of this book, and this book, and this book. Christina, welcome to the Library of Congress. I'm so happy to have you here. Oh, Meg, I'm so happy to be here. So what have you brought with us yeah. for us today? Okay, so I brought Freestyle, which is a graphic novel by Gail Galligan. So they illustrated and wrote this graphic novel. So a lot of people know Gail because they have illustrated a lot of the Babysitter's Club graphic novels, but this one is totally their own creation. And it is the story of a group of kids who live in New York City. And the main character is Corey, and Corey is a dancer. He's a b-boy, and he's got this crew that um, is a break dancing crew, and every year they, they compete in this dance competition. And they have never won, and this is their eighth grade year, the last year before they're gonna all go off to different high schools. This is their last chance to actually win the thing. But Corey's parents want him to focus on his school, so they hire a tutor for him, a girl that he cannot stand, until he finds out that secretly she is into yo-yoing. And so the story just like, he, so it's got dance. Corey is like trying to divide his time between his dance team, his tutoring, his, now he's in love with the yo-yo. He thinks yo-yoing is amazing. And, um, and, and, you know, he's got to figure out how's he going to balance all of these things. But what I love about this one so much, and just what I love about graphic novels is if I told you, uh, you know, I want to write a novel about break dancing and yo-yo, like it would, that could, it could, it could be great, but a graphic novel, I mean, just the illustrations, they just pop off of the page. You know, there's just so much action, so much movement. Um, I, I really, I think that if someone was interested in ever being a comic book artist or a graphic novel artist, um, like they should study this book as, uh, you know, just to learn how to tell a story with visuals. It's just absolutely gorgeous. It's one of the most beautiful graphic novels I've ever seen. And my daughter told me to tell you that she read it four times. Oh my goodness. She wanted you to know that. Well, that, so. thank you very much for letting me know because now that is on my to be read. Yes, it's wonderful. And I love how seamlessly, you know, dancing, yo-yoing, why not? Put yeah. it all together. Yeah. Yeah, and the parents at the core of the problem. That's right. You know, yeah. that's the, that means they're studying. So, I'm so glad to have you to chat because it's not often that I get to sit with someone who writes so luminously, both in fiction and nonfiction. And it's amazing to me because you have a really interesting background. Word on the street has it that you are a sort of a scientist, a mechanical engineer, and you also write these fantasy worlds. So tell us about your background. Yeah, so, you know, I think there's this um, stereotypical vision of an engineer that what they learn is just like it's all math and science and they're just like a math and a science genius. But, but really what you learn as an engineer is you learn to be a problem solver. And, and it's a, a huge part of your training is you're learning to work with other people, you learn to work on a team, and you kind of um, adopt this mindset that there's no problem you can't solve. You just have to break it down into smaller steps. You have to, you know, you, you know what your constraints are, you know what you have to work with, and you can solve this problem with your teammates if you just break it down and approach it. Is that not what we need to know to write a book? Exactly, that's oh exactly goodness. it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I mean, it's not, it's not far off. You know, that I, I feel like I'm using those skills every time. Because a novel, that's like an impossible problem. Oh my goodness, you're not kidding. When you're looking at that blank page and you've got the story all in here, like how on earth am I going to write it? Yeah. So do you break it down into the little pieces? Yeah, it's a just, I, I have moments where I have to tell myself, I, this is a problem I can solve. I just have to figure it out. These are my constraints. This is how much time I have. And you know, people think writing is so solitary, but you you do have a team. You know, oh you goodness. have your editors, your friends who read it for you. It, and sometimes your readers kind of become your team too. They give you feedback and you learn from them. So um, 
I want to talk with you also about the lens on your work because you are both Thai and North American Texan specifically. Yes, yes. And so um, I'm thinking, for example, of um, Wish in the Dark, um, where you are centering Thai children or children who are, you know, non-mainstream. And so talk to me a little bit about that, if you would. Yeah, I, so many of my fantasy novels um, are set in Thailand. I guess all of my fantasy novels are set in a, Thai, in a world that's inspired by Thailand. Right. Um, and I think that just comes from, I, I loved fantasy as a young reader. That was my number one, like, you know, Lord of the Rings, Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, all the Roald Dahl books, like everything like that. And, and, but almost everything I read was set in England with the British Isles, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. and I mean, I could tell you more about like, like the, the Moors and the Shire and the, the Heath and then, you know, my, my own backyard. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and so when I, when I started writing these books, um, you know, I, if you've ever been to Thailand, and if you haven't been, I hope you get to go. But it is so magical. I mean, you that's what oh. everyone says who goes there. It's like, this is a magical place. It is. It gives you so much the feeling that magic really exists in the world. And so, you know, as a setting for a fantasy story, it's it's perfect. And it's, and it's really, you know, it's unexplored. There are not many fantasy stories that are set there. So it makes it, as a writer, it makes it exciting and um, challenging, you know, a little terrifying too, um, but it's, it's so rich with opportunity for your imagination. It's a beautiful thing. Christina, it has been so lovely to have you here with me today. I, I feel so honored to be with you and I can't wait to see all the other books that are in, percolating inside you. I, I can feel it, um, but thank you for joining me today.